I've been moving files from one computer to another computer. I'm actually trying to consolidate four computers into one new MacBook Pro. And while I was doing that, I was going over files on my external drives and I found this video from exactly one year ago from today. And I figured I would just go on and share it here with you guys. I, for whatever reason, I just kept filming and doing other things and covering other subjects and this video got lost in the shuffle. So I think it's somewhat still relevant. So enjoy. The Boss RC500 Loop Station. My first Boss effects or any type of unit I ever used was a, I think it was called a CL50, which I don't have sitting up here right now. It was a multi effects processor, okay? And it was in the early 90s that I had it. Then I moved on and I bought this thing. But I tried to use it with the bass and that didn't work out too well. So then I tried to use this with the bass. The Big Muff 2, that didn't work out very well either. And then I moved on to this, the Bass Overdrive. From there, I am struggling to remember if I went to the Boss Course and then the Overdrive, but either way, these two were purchased before ultimately, and this, before ultimately purchasing this. This was the last piece that I purchased for this pedal board that I made myself. This is about the loop station. This is the third day I've had this unit. I have yet to take it out of the box. I have been so, so busy. But here's what's in the box. That's a manual, of course, some other little papers. And then there are four AA batteries. And I have this Boss AC adapter that I've had forever. And it has a little, um, I had purchased this additional thing with it, or either it came with it, a daisy chain unit and it works really well. It has a bunch of these on there so that you can plug in multiple pedals, okay? So here it is in all its glory. Two tracks there, edit, edit, so you can edit the tracks, I guess. You got your rhythm, memory, menu, your right exit, enter, your input, which obviously controls that mic level because you've got a mic input on the back. You've got three pedal buttons here that you can kick into. Here's the back. You've got your mic input, stereo, got your USB, PSAS adapter only. Now I'm a little bit worried. That's a PSA 120T that I have. Maybe I shouldn't use this adapter. I guess I'll be using AA batteries. No problem, I've got a ton of AA batteries. I even have a lot of rechargeable. So to play it safe, I'm gonna use batteries until I can do a little bit more research and make sure that this unit will work with this AC adapter without it causing any type of damage. It's probably something right in front of my face and I just don't see it. In the meantime, we're gonna just play it safe and use the included batteries. This is gonna be my first time ever trying anything with this. Now I need to get a beat going. So I had no idea that I was recording. This was my first take. All I gotta do is step on the record and play button. So I'm gonna do that. So now I've got my groove going, and I can play over it if I want, like a... And 
that's it. So that's just a quick demonstration of what you can do. You can keep doing overdubs and I can, I've got two tracks. I wish I would have stored the original. Um, I need to work on that because it seems like every time I turn this thing off, I lose everything and I know that that's just me and I need to spend some more time with this, which is the instruction manual. Pedals like this, they're necessary and I think that it's good to have something that you can play along with and keep you locked in. And right now, a lot of these things are on sale. So if you wanna pick something up like this, you should do that. Check these things out because I think they're good to have. It's nice to have something that you can just, when you wanna get something going, you just hit it. And, you know, you've got your groove going and 